Ok, so this is Rafi Media Villa from criticologos.com. Uh, Bryson and Kevin, thank you for the clever attack talk about the movie and the series. And congratulations on the success of the series and the movie, because I know it's going to be a hit. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much. Listen, I want to stop. I want to start with, with some fun questions. Uh, do you guys follow the sport uh, in, in real life? I want to ask. Uh, or, and if you do, who is your GOAT when it comes to the players? Came in you first. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say I only follow when World Cup rolls around. You can't help it. It's it's infectious. You gotta gotta root for your home team. Gotta go USA. Want to see them get it done. But um, I, I, I'm not. I don't. I'm not. I'm pretty casual when it comes to to the rest of the guys. I I know Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo has got a big rivalry. I'm scared to pick one. I don't want the fans to jump on me. But I root for all the successful people out there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've, I've never been much of a sports person myself. I was very much Nagi in that I I played video games my whole life. I, I was more into that side, side of things. Um, but uh, working on these shows uh, like Blue Lock and Haikyuu before it, it's definitely gotten me more interested in checking out games whenever I get the option. Uh, and and I, 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 I apologize. I'm not really familiar with any of the individual players. <laughs> But I, you know what? The reason that I asked the question is because I came in, he, he, you know, he he did on the head. I think the the World Cup, at least this past year, sport, sport you know, sparked an interest on the sport. And, mm -hmm. I, and I'm and I'm and I'm wondering if 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 you guys feel that the success of the series and the or or that the same the manga the series came about was uh, it, it, you know it had it had it was tied into some of the success of the sport in the past couple of years. So do you feel that there's a tie between both of them? Uh, uh, you, Bryson, you first this time. Of course, yes. I, I feel like they timed it out perfectly. I, I And I wouldn't be surprised if they did it on purpose to be like, well, the World Cup's about to show up. We got to make sure that we have this show airing on TV at the same time as the, as the World Cup because everybody's hyped about soccer. Let's watch this show that's about soccer and, and uh, just go from there. Um, and uh, no, yeah, I, I think they timed it out perfectly. <laughs> Yeah, I think the, time, the timing was great. Um, it couldn't have been better. It couldn't have been better. You know, a, a lot of people were at the in the anime world. Everyone was talking about Chainsaw Man. So I'm glad that the World Cup boosted Blue Lock into the, the mainstream of all these people seeing the memes on TikTok of, of this really cool character, Isagi, doing these really cool tricks. And like, what? What's that guy? He reminds me of Messi. You know what? I am going to pick a favorite. I'm going to say Messi's my guy because he's short <laughs> like me. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, it was. I, I have to ask these two questions because when I, I typically post on my media and social media that I'm watching something so that people can be, you know, stay ahead of me, maybe I'll do a review or an interview. And I got bombarded with comments of, hey, this is the first anime or the first manga that I'm reading, or I'm so excited for the movie, mostly because they're a fan of the sport. So I mm -hmm. took, that took me a surprise that most of the people that just, you know, spoke about the question, sure, I'm part of the sport and this is the first manga or the first anime that I'm picking up because of how the story is all, it comes, uh, comes about. So talking about the story, um, this is a prequel, right, to how, how the series came around and, and how, uh, how, how um, Nagi came into the, the, the facility. So I wonder what aspect of the, what aspects of the characters were you able to touch in in this in the in the movie that you, you haven't been able to touch in the series itself? Uh, came in you first. I might say fleshing out the relationship between with with Rayo and Nagi, and then even Rayo's personal goals to, to in, in desires and dreams, where people could immediately go, "Oh, maybe he's just riding the coattails of Nagi. Maybe he's attracted to Nagi." I saw I saw all of it, and, and it was so cool that to be able to 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 clear up the narrative of why Rayo's wants to be a soccer star what's his true dreams are and his relationship with nagi in the blue lock world mm -hmm. Bye, and yes yes i uh i feel like with the tv series uh when nagi and reo get introduced it's it's kind of like in the midpoint of the arc in the film um so like being able to go back and showcase some of their earlier relationship uh like how they met how they first developed and how they first got into blue lock i feel like we uh, really get to see a lot more of that, obviously, as it focuses on them for this film. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that we were able to to discover some of those moments and finding more of the nuances, especially in Re in uh, Nagi's character in the earlier parts of the series. Um, because I feel like in the TV series, he evolves so much over the course of the first few episodes he shows that like he's kind of he's kind of become a different person by the end of the first season and being able to go back to his original like state of being and, and kind of that more like 
uh, aloof, uh, less less caring uh, character, and finding the nuances of that was definitely an interesting challenge and and a, a fun um, uh, uh, arc to navigate. If that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> um, I I I love to ask this question to voice actors because your voice and everything is is spicy, but your voice you're not acting, you're just you're providing your voice to pro, to project portray this character. So I wonder how much of your character is you following the script as all you're writing, or how much are you adding something of yourself into your character, Brian on your, your first system? Um, so it, I, I would say that even, even though it is voiceover, we are, we are still acting just as much as we would be if we were on stage or on camera. And we are trying to find aspects of ourselves. Yes. In terms of like technical, like I feel like Nagi vocally doesn't sound that much different from me. Like naturally he's kind of more in my middle range. Um, whereas a lot of other characters I play tend to be in more of my higher range, but like my, my goal going into an anime in particular is watching the energy of the animation and hearing that original performance and trying to find the the aspects and nuances of the character that made them such a beloved character in the original uh, release um, and just trying to match that energy, maybe not even trying to like 100% imitate the tone or the specific voice that they did, but at least just trying to service the service what's given to me. So I try not to insert too much of my own personal self into things where it doesn't feel appropriate, but I definitely insert a little bit of myself whenever he's just kind of like, oh, I just don't want to work. I just want to play video games. Cause I definitely, I feel that every, I feel that every now and then. <laughs> no, yes. We're definitely, we're definitely acting in there. I mean, those emotions that come out of us are, um, we've got to find those. We can't just, uh, just mimic those for sound. Those are some true, um, true emotions coming out of us in those moments and having to find that in ourselves, whether if you're the type of actor that pulls from experiences or, just pulls from the given circumstances of what's what's in front of you based on the text and the and the context. But um, it's I, it was it was a challenging matching the voice because yeah I, I like to listen to the, the Japanese first and do that do the respect to that of of their vocal range and it was a little bit higher than mine so I was a little nervous going in but thanks to our director Jonathan Riggs an amazing leader um, instilled that confidence in me to have my own kind of take on it and to lean into uh, what I want to provide to the piece. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's talk about uh, the story and, and the characters a little bit because obviously it's about ego, it's about team, but it's also about individuals. It's about, it's about different things that we're touching upon in in, a, in, in the sports world and also in the, in the personal world. So I wonder, what is it that you guys took away from the path? You have taken away for now because they're still running, right, uh, from the project uh, regarding the balance between the sport as a team and the way the story develops as this individual, as, you know, we all have stars in, in our team, but how it develops between balancing the whole ego side and the whole team side, what is it something that we took away from from the series and the, and the movie as itself uh, came in you first? It's a lot like life, man. We're, um, you, you grow up in middle school, high school, there's your best friends in the world and they want to go be an engineer. I want to go be an actor. And the time you're going to be able to spend to achieve those goals, you're going to slowly, woo, you might separate and hopefully still link up for each other's marriages and things, but you're, you're going to have to lose friends to pursue your goals. You're going to have to um, maybe not make it to every family event to selfishly pursue being the great, uh, being great at something. So um, I love that, that they delve deep into that aspect in the, in the, in the movie as well. And um, at, speaking to Nagi and Rayo's perspective in particular, I feel like they both go into it um, as a team and they're very much there to support each other. Uh, Rayo is there to bring the best out of Nagi and what he sees in them. Nagi's just there because, oh, my friend likes this game and I guess I'm good at it. I'll play it for him. Um, but what I love about both of their character arcs, and uh, they delve into this even further in the series after the film, um, that like they kind of find their own reasons for being at blue lock independent of each other um because i feel like they they tend to come in with obviously they have a great friendship and there's almost even a little bit of codependency there that they kind of have to figure out for themselves like why they're there uh regardless of the other person and i feel like that's important in real life too where it's like you may fall into a relationship or you may fall into doing something that your friends really enjoy doing and then you're just kind of there but if it's something that you find you really want to do you also really need to find for yourself like what it is about it that is important to you and what keeps you going at it 
um, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. One final question before I let you go. I think we're going to go. I think we're going to go. Um, invite people to see it. Why do they see it? I mean, obviously, if you're not a fan of, of if this is your first, uh, your first anime, your first uh, manga, why should they, should they see the movie? Came on you first. I'd say um, it's cutthroat. It's dog eat dog sports. It's uh, it's intense. It's fun. Um, you're gonna have a blast, and once you're done reading, you're gonna want to go pursue your goals with the same level of intensity. <laughs> True. And uh, to, in addition to that point, just a lot of great visuals for people that are like more artistic minded, like a, amazing animation, great performances from other actors in this film as well. Um, and then yeah, just like a lot of hype moments. Very very. Very fun. It's almost like the anti-sports, too, where it's kind of like, well, you might go into it expecting, oh, it's a sports anime. It's going to be about all oh, feel good, do your best, and that's good enough. But like like he said, it's definitely that darker kind of like, no, we're going to be number one. I'm going to be number one, like that kind of <laughs> stuff. So I, I hope that more people will check it out with, with that in mind for sure. It's true. I, I can acknowledge that it it it, it, it touches in, in the, in different in different emotions. That's maybe what I what, what should say. Again, again, guys, thank you for your time. Congratulations on the series. I absolutely loved it. And again, like you guys, I'm not a fan of the sport, but I think the World Cup and Messi and the whole Messi being in Miami, you know, made everybody everybody just jump into the 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 hype of it all. And I and I think it shows in the series. Congratulations once again. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. bye.